Welcome to Madden Science. Today we're learning all about life's principles, nature's design lessons. As you can see in this diagram, the six main principles are adapt to changing conditions, be locally attuned and responsive, use life-friendly chemistry, be resource efficient, integrate development with growth, and evolve to survive. Now take a look at this life's principles diagram that includes all of the sub-principles. I'll be working from this list. I'd like to share with you some of my favorite examples for each of life's principles. I've selected one example from biology and one example from design. See the video links below in the description. Nest Home Learning Thermostat is an energy saving device that can be used in your home or business. The most innovative part about the Nest Home Thermostat is that it's able to change and adjust to your own needs and patterns. In this way, Nest is a nice design example of the life's principle, adapt to changing conditions. Nest is able to learn from your habits and it runs algorithms to determine optimal settings to save energy and lower costs, benefiting you and the environment, saving some people as much as 10 to 12% on heating bills and up to 15% on cooling bills. Nest has even embedded motion sensors that monitor when you're home or away. Nest's ability to adjust to your needs and lifestyles, as well as the weather and seasons, make it a high quality example of this life's principle. Lichens are perhaps my favorite organisms. They're a wonderful splash of life and unexpected color. Lichens are also a shining biology example of the life's principle, incorporate diversity. Lichens are a mutualistic, symbiotic organism consisting of algae and or cyanobacteria and fungi and often more than one species. The composite organism is a wonderful representation of biodiversity as it's not just made up of more than one species, but also more than one kingdom. The mutualistic relationship works because the algae or cyanobacteria are able to photosynthesize and produce food, while the fungus is able to help absorb water and nutrients, and provide support and anchorage. And just a few short months ago, hiding in plain sight, scientists discovered that lichens incorporate even more diversity than previously thought and are made up of additional fungal species. Hawaii's honeycreepers are a dynamic biology example of the life's principle, be locally attuned and responsive. These colorful and vibrant birds, endemic to the Hawaiian Islands, are a model of evolution and adaptive radiation. Honeycreepers have been locally attuned and responsive to the Hawaiian Islands' geography, geology, and climate for thousands of years. They've undergone slightly yet noticeable changes to their coloration and their beak shapes as they've adapted to specific niches. In particular, their exquisitely honed beaks have been attuned to local food sources and the populations of honeycreepers have responded by evolving novel and more highly adapted beak shapes and sizes. Uber, the multinational online transportation company, is a current design example of the life's principle, use feedback loops. Uber is a transportation juggernaut that serves as an alternative to taxis, often at lower prices with more convenience. Uber takes customer feedback seriously and as passengers and drivers rate each other after each ride. This data can influence which drivers are chosen and which passengers are picked up. This is an innovative and important use of feedback loops. However, these loops go even deeper as explained by our friends over at Freakonomics. Uber is, in many ways, the embodiment of what economists would like the economy to look like, because Uber is a market in some sense, that, that the prices you pay respond to supply and demand. When there are lots of people looking for rides and not enough drivers, they raise the price, and when there are too many drivers and not enough people, they keep the price low. So that is how economists like markets to work. You see this really cool smelling tree? I got it from my neighbor's yard. It's a camphor tree, and the smell it's producing comes from a chemical called camphor. 
used in traditional medicines. This camphor tree is a close relative of cinnamon and ginger, and like all of life, it does its chemistry in water. Life is aqueous. The camphor tree constructs this aromatic compound inside of each of its cells, and the chemical formula is C10H16O. The camphor tree makes different variants of this aromatic chemical depending on the tree's location. It's used medicinally as a spice and to help ward off insects. Side note, the study of traditional medicinal plant usage is called ethnobotany and involves all sorts of needochemistry. If you get a chance, check out this book, Tales of a Shaman's Apprentice by Mark Plotkin. Mycofiltration is a design process that uses mushrooms and fungi to clean and act as biofilters. It's a creative example of the life's principle, break down products into benign constituents. Fungi and their mycelial network act as growing and living biofilters that are placed in a stream bed or farm runoff locations where they break down products into benign constituents. Microfiltration functions include killing bacteria like E. coli and lowering coliform levels and acting as microfilters which can be used in microremediation and help absorb toxic medical metals from water supplies. An additional function is that the biofilters in stream beds can help decrease erosion and help renew soils. Back when I was teaching in Chicago, we had our very own aquaponics club. Sweetwater Organics in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, an urban fish and vegetable farm, was our inspiration. They operate an aquaponic system that is resource efficient in both material and energy. Their aquaponic systems are modeled after nature's aquatic ecosystems. Aquaponics is a groovy combination of both hydroponics and aquaculture. This elegant solution is resource efficient in that it's nearly closed loop. They save 90% of the water used in traditional farming. They're able to grow food, both fish and plants, with very few outside inputs. The system relies on moving water through fish tanks. That water is then moved through biofilters, housing nitrogen-fixing bacteria. The water is then moved across crow beds, housing plants. The bacteria convert fish pee, or ammonia, into usable nitrogen sources for the plants. Further aiding to the life's principle, be resource efficient, is the fact that some of the fish can eat some of the veggies that they grow, and outdoor systems can rely on sunlight for energy. Cell signaling pathways use multifunctional design. Cell signaling in general relies on a relatively small number of signal molecules. Often these signal molecules have many functions and send different signals. When epinephrine is released, initiating a fight or flight response, it does multiple things. These functions depend on the location where it is received. As this figure illustrates, three possible outcomes happen. In each of the three cases, the signal, epinephrine, is the exact same. The first two pictures show the effects of different receptor proteins, alpha versus beta. One function to constrict intestinal blood vessels, the alpha, and the other signal receptor, beta, is present on skeletal muscles and blood vessels and signals for those vessels to dilate. Beta receptors are also present on liver cells for epinephrine signals for the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. Animal nervous and endocrine systems have evolved signaling pathways to take advantage of and follow the life's principle, use multifunctional design. Dinococcus radiodurans is arguably the toughest, most durable, most resistant life form on Earth. It's an elegant biology example of the life's principle, integrate development with growth. This extremophile bacterium is able to withstand extreme conditions, including chemical insults in the form of radiation, cold, vacuum, acids, and dehydration. Because of this high degree of resistance, it is called a polyextremophile. Dinococcus radiodurans integrates development and growth in the same way it is able to take on these extreme conditions. Bounce back after onslaught, prepare its DNA, and then continue growing. Conan the bacterium. 
as it's sometimes called, can withstand 500 rads of radiation without missing a beat, and upwards of 1.5 million rads and still operate at 37% viability, whereas 500 rads can kill a human. Enococcus radioderms is able to continue its development and growth via heightened DNA repair mechanism. Wangari Mathai has long been one of my great inspirations, and part of her lasting legacy, the Green Belt Movement, is a beautiful and compelling design example of the life's principle, build from the bottom up. Wangari was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004 for her contribution to sustainable development, democracy, and peace. Environment is every day issue. It's the air we breathe. It's the water we drink. It's the food we eat. And we can't live without these things. Wangari started the Green Belt Movement in 1977, focusing on planting trees in communities, environmental conservation, and women's rights. The Green Belt Movement to this day remains an indigenous, grassroots, non-governmental movement that builds from the bottom up both metaphorically within communities and with women's rights, and also literally by planting trees as a way to achieve a more sustainable and peaceful world. Since its start, over 51 million trees have been planted and over 30,000 women have been trained. The NFL is in the middle of a battle for the future of its sport and the safety of its players. Helmet technology has progressively improved in its ability to protect the heads and the brains of players. The NFL's ongoing research into helmet technology and rules adjustments are design examples of the life's principle evolved to survive. Helmets have gone from an outer covering of leather to fortified leather and padding, to plastic shells, to shells with wire face masks. Paralleling this evolution of the helmet design has been an ever-quickening evolution of the players and the sport itself. The NFL, in an effort to protect its players and ultimately protect its sport, continues to look into new helmet technologies that lessen impact forces and decrease the amount of head trauma. The NFL push to evolve to survive also includes changes in the rules of the game, moving towards changing the way in which tackling is taught and officiated. The human brain goes through significant changes and growth during the teenage years. Teenagers have long been regarded as impulsive and immature, and research shows that at least some of this is related to the brain's maturation during this time. Human brain development is thus a compelling biological example of the life's principle, integrate the unexpected. Here the brain itself is, via its development, able to encourage and assimilate novel and unexpected experiences into its own growth. The brain is able to integrate mistakes that is helpful and beneficial to the species. This happens through genetic changes, leading to evolutionary changes and also through cultural evolution and behavioral changes that then in turn influence and can change the course of a species evolution. It is thought that great and unique changes in our species, perhaps even migrations and tool making, are the products of teenagers developing brains and the willingness to integrate the unexpected. Thanks for tagging along on this Life's Principles adventure and be sure to take good care.